All right, Eastern Bloc Air Guns is back with a Huben update. Now, uh, just so you guys know, I've had several videos on this Huben, and this Huben is shooting 18 grain JSBs. Great, just like any other gun, but semi-auto with an extraordinary high shot count. I put a Huma reg in it after a couple issues with my original, um, but I have the reg set at, there you go, can you believe that? Just barely into the green, which is about 107 bar. And I'm getting five, about five magazines with a 4,300 PSI fill, 300 bar. And if I go up to 350, which a gun is capable, I'm getting like six, six and a half magazines. That's 120, 130 shots. Amazing. I, insane. I can't believe it. And I love that part of this gun so much. Um, but I loved it so much. I wanted to experiment more with the slugs. Now, if you recall, I did not have great success with slugs right off the bat. It took me a while and I almost gave up. And then I saw a video that Nate did. And that it was a follow-up video on the Huben, a follow-up video from his view on the Huben. And in the video, he explained how he could have shot this better. I guess he was contacted by somebody else who shoots a Huben, Air Sniper Song V, and told how to shoot it. And I took those tips and I tested them out to see if they worked. And uh, the first tip was keep the barrel clean. And that's kind of tricky with this gun. And I, he didn't go in detail how the barrel had to be clean, but it's true. It has to be clean and it has to be clean in a special way because it's just, it's not a regular gun. You can't use a patchworm like usual. So I found a way to do it and I'll explain that in a way not to do it. Two, he used lube. Um, he recommended one type of lube and I tried several and I'll talk about those lubes. Those are important. And three, you got to shoot the ma the gun, lube everything up. You got to shoot a couple of mags before you shoot. Um, the first mag or two is not good, but in between there, it starts working. I'll explain why. So you're going to see 50 yards, you're going to see 100 yards, and then that, you're going to see some like terminal ballistics. Some uh, very crude scientific way that I did and it showed good results. And you'll, you'll see at the end what the ballistics are. So I hope you enjoy the video. First chapter would be barrel cleaning. All right, this Huben is unique in the sense that it cannot, cannot clean the barrel traditionally with a boar snake. I wish I could, I really wish, hint, hint, Huben, I could open this back plate up, expose the barrel and push a patchworm through, but you can't. Hint, Huben, maybe you can fix that. Anyway, so we had to find, I had to find a different way and I started using these. These are just felt patches that um, cleaning pellets they're called. You put them in and shoot them through the human and they seem to be cleaning, doing a good job, but to my amazement after doing this, they do work, but not to the extent you need to shoot slugs. Let me put it that way. So I went back to my old traditional means that I used to do with firearms is the rod. This is a one piece rod with a twisting handle and of course, you cannot use a copper brushes like you can in a firearm. So I bought bore brushes. Now this is 25 caliber. 22 is too loose, I feel. So I bought 25. And the only thing you gotta do is kind of on some is take a pliers and snip this end. The 25 doesn't exactly fit perfectly in the 22. So just close this end. And then you'll be able to attach them. And gently, uh, you don't want to wreck anything. They're metal in here. So gently put them into the human barrel. If it doesn't go right away, don't force it. There you go. Gently. And I do a couple dry ones. I know it'll turn black. 
partially black. Then you get all the dry stuff in, and then on the second one, I put ballastol just to loosen up the barrel and keep doing it. And slowly do everything slow, loosen it all up with ballastol, and then do at least two more dry ones to clean it out. And that, I don't think it gets 100%, but it'll get it more like 90% clean. And that'll be, that'll be cleaning up to shoot slugs effectively. All right, next section comes the lube. The experimental, you're experimenting with the lube. My favorite section. Okay, first of all, um, Nate and the Airgun Channel and Song V recommended this type. I think it was like five, eight bucks a bottle. And uh, that did work fine. But I wanted to try more. Something maybe a little cheaper and I ended up buying this. Um, this is just air gun air tool lubrication and that worked great too about the same I would say so that's a whole lot more for a whole bunch cheaper and Then I wanted to take it a step farther. So I took my 28 ground barber knockers, which the slug shot the best out of my gun I also had good ones with H H&M and took some thick silicon grease and I actually Took each round the day before I shot, put a thin, thin layer, just a thinnest layer I could get all, all around the head of the slug. Just thin. And then I put each one into a HFX hybrid um, package for protection. And I did that. And that was the best results. Um, it just takes too much time. I just figured if that works well, that works the best. I just, during these videos, I didn't do that. I forgot it at home. I didn't have time last night to do it. So I shot today 50, 100, 100 yards, and here's the results. All right, next we got the 50 yard groups. Boom, as a baseline, I shot pellets, monster redesigns at 1,060 for about 60 foot pounds, roughly. And then I shot the slugs at 1,050, at 40, 50, at this group. Now, if you compare these pellets, they're all, right on top of each other and slugs there's some spread but it's not that much if you take away this shot and this shot they are roughly the same if you take away those two flyers so this is phenomenal i was not getting this group at 50 yards just a few months ago so these tips are working for this gun it's now becoming a viable slug gun let's check it out at 100.
A lot of wind in my face right now. All right, here are the groups at 100. Boom, here's, here's Monster Redesigns. Now, that's re respectable. I think that's, uh, I think both of these are about 15 or 16 shot groups. That's respectable. That's good. It was windy. You can see, I was, earlier in the day, we were getting about 15, 10 to 15 mile hour winds, and that, that range at that time was about 8 to 10. And I was sheltered quite a bit, and straight on, the wind was coming from a 1 o'clock. So it's always tough to shoot. So that was damn respectable group. And here's the slugs. You can see immediately that not as good. But if you look at it, take away these top four and move them down. Maybe take away this one. That would, group would be better. Is a, this is also a 15 to 16 shot group, something like that. And that is still good. You can see the pellets were moved horizontally more by the wind. These slugs stayed in a much tighter horizontal group, but had a much more spread out vertical group. So I still think this gun is now is very slug capable. If you follow these rules, you have a semi-auto 70 foot pound. This is 70 foot pounds, that's about 60. You have a extraordinarily high powered semi-auto gun that never jams, never have cycling issues yet. Amazing. So the next section here, I didn't talk about that. Um, I wanted to do something about ballistics, and I actually had a pigeon, a, a broken pigeon that I dropped, nose came off, that I wanted to test to see what kind of terminal performance a slug has over these JSB redesigns, and here's what I found. It. So I wanted to find a use to this broken pigeon um, decoy. So I shot it with the slugs, thinking it would shatter and jill in pieces, but it didn't. And when I went out to check it, I picked it up. I could hear these slugs, pieces of lead just jiggling around inside of it. just fall just they didn't even a lot of them didn't even exit out of this bird which completely surprised me they were just when they hit this hard plastic they just expanded and they were caught inside so then i shot it with redesign all right it's signs and to my amazement there was almost nothing in there. I had to go behind the dirt and dig them out. And here's what I found behind the pigeon. Where'd the other one go? I found the redesigns just squashed. Their heads were out, but they were still pellets. They just, they weren't scraps of metal like the slugs. So I could tell clearly the slugs would just had probably three, four times more terminal performance than these. These just sliced right through while these just expanded and exploded inside the pigeon. And the, most of them didn't even exit. You see here, a lot of these holes here are exits from the pellets. So I was at a crossroads. I was at a crossroads with the human. Do I use slugs or do I use pellets in high power? I mean, I re thought about this a hundred times. Pellets, pellet on pellet of 50 at 60 foot pounds, but slugs at 70 foot pounds are a little worse. Boom. Pellets at 100 yards, slugs at 100 yards. 
Horizontal dispersion, the wind is much better, but the horizontal of the slugs is a little wor is worse. Pellets are just solid two, two and a half inch groups, 19, 15 shots. It, I, I replay this over over my head and I decided, boom! <laughs> I need two humans. And when it comes to high power, why would I have to ever pick between a slug, 60 foot pound, or pellet 60 foot pounds and a slug at 70 foot pounds when all I have to do is this. Three clicks. Boom. That line is pellets. Three clicks this way. Sorry, this way. Slug, 70 foot pounds. And you don't have to pick with this gun. I just remember that at 50 yards, the pellets are going to be or the slugs are going to be two minutes of angle higher at 100 yards about four minutes of angle higher than the pellets that's it you don't have to pick with that this gun so in conclusion since i couldn't figure out if i wanted high power or low power high shot count i just bought two i shouldn't I'm probably gonna end up selling this one but like it is in conclusion this gun is he had a rough start in life when it came off four or five years ago, but now we're figuring it out. Us air gunners are figuring it out. It's an absolutely capable 70 foot pound mid range pellet gun, semi auto. I got very special plans for this gun, and you're gonna be seeing a lot more of it. It's as you can tell, it's now a keeper in my arsenal. I'm never gonna get rid of this one. Great, I can't be happier with this gun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a lot. And if you decide to get a human, I hope you this will make it easier. The magazine with slugs when the pellet accelerates and tries to get jammed down the, the barrel. When you hit the edge, that's what scars up the pellet. It, <laughs> at, well, as you, as you merry guys know that, stick something down something <laughs> else without lube, it's bad. Same with the human. If you try to stick jam a slug into the, okay, I gotta do this differently.